Welcome back to Arm Brewster Capital Management's Invest Ed Vidcast series. I'm Chris Sabool and I'm here with Mark Arm Brewster. We're talking today about bargain opportunities in the stock market. Mark, this seems counterintuitive. With stocks at all time highs and growth companies with big valuations making the most headlines, bargain hunting seems like a fool's errand. It certainly felt that way the past few years, but even with all the froth in the market today, there are still some stocks trading at rock bottom valuations and some of them will likely be big winners in the years to come. I think internally you've been calling these blue light specials. That's right. They're like those Kmart promotions. Attention, Kmart shoppers. Actually, I don't like to admit it, but back in high school, I worked at Kmart one summer. The pay was $6 per hour and all the pride I could swallow. It wasn't the best job, but I do vividly remember the blue light specials. They were special deals throughout the day with additional savings on particular items. And they actually had a flashing blue light that one of the store associates would haul over to signal the monumental bargain being offered. And there was also an announcement over the PA system in the store in case anyone could miss the big blue light. (laughs) Okay, so how does that relate to today's stock market? Well, because among the hot IPOs and the soaring technology stocks, there are still some underappreciated segments of the stock market that can be bought at reasonable prices. And there's no announcement over the PA system. There's no flashing blue light to point out these stocks. But for those intrepid souls who dare to flout conventional norms, there's an opportunity that could protect capital and also generate significant returns in the decade to come. That sounds pretty good. Today's cyclically adjusted price to earnings or CAPE ratio for the S&P 500 is now the second highest ever, behind only the dot-com boom of the 1990s. Prior Cape peaks have been followed by significant market declines, such as in 1929 and 2000. Why wouldn't everyone want to protect capital and search for future outsized returns in such an environment? Why do you think that would be unconventional? Because such strategies still involve risk, and even worse, they run the risk of failing unconventionally. Buying technology stocks today is fairly easy. Many of them are solid companies with strong growth profiles. Their historical returns have been stellar, and these stocks earn glowing headlines in the media on almost a daily basis. However, it's unlikely that they'll continue to provide this same level of returns going forward. The problem is the alternative is to buy stocks, such as value stocks, that have had a horrible run over the past several years. They also are in non-flashy industries or industries that may face future regulatory headwinds like energy or financials. Traders don't want to own these stocks, uh, but many of these stocks trade at such attractive levels that regardless of future headwinds, the stocks almost can't help but outperform in the coming decade. But there's also the issue of timing. While it seems obvious that a shift from growth to value will occur, no one knows precisely when. It could be starting now, or it could take several more years. And if it takes longer than anticipated, that perceived unconventional failing in the interim can result in a lot of pressure that presents career risk for professional investors and even social pressures for individuals. When these types of rotations have occurred in the past, they have often been accompanied by severe market downturns. Is that imminent this time as well? We can't say for sure that this market rally will end with a bust. Uh, When the CAPE ratio has been at this level in the past, there have been some disastrous periods, such as those you mentioned earlier. However, even without a big stock market decline, the data is quite clear that high valuations today lead to low future returns. Forward 10-year returns for the S&P 500 have been at most 6% annualized and at worst a small loss even over a 10-year period when starting valuations have been as high as they are currently. That compares with roughly a a 10 or 11% return over the full market history. And in fact, to make matters worse, the regression trend line would put expected returns at close to zero for the coming decade. So does that mean we should be out of stocks for the next decade? We've been talking lately about the likelihood of another lost decade for stocks. This happened in the 2000s when the point-to-point return for the S&P 500 was less than 1%. Losses for the stock market over such a long horizon are pretty rare, um, and even during such periods, poor performance for stocks has generally been somewhat offset by stronger returns for bonds. However, we recently read a paper published by investment firm GMO that viewed this through a different lens. Most investors don't have portfolios that are 100% stocks, but rather own a balanced mix of stocks and bonds. And it turns out even that approach is not without its risks. GMO's research shows six periods, ranging from seven years to 19 years in length, where a 60% stock and 40% bond portfolio generated flat or losing returns. Their data goes back to 1900, but four of these dead money periods occurred during the post-war era. 
Also, GMO points out that each of these periods was preceded by either stocks or bonds being overvalued. Today, we have the dubious distinction of an era with both stocks and bonds in historical valuation territory. Not only is the CAPE ratio the second highest on record, but interest rates are as low as they've ever been. Right. The truism that high valuations today lead to low future returns is not reserved for the stock market. Bonds are also subject to the physical laws and seem to follow the pattern even more closely. Historically, the starting yield on the bond market has been an excellent predictor of future bond market returns. So, expect high-quality bond returns of less than 1% in the coming decade. So, the idea that there could be some damage coming, or at least subpar returns, is why investors need to protect capital more so today than in the past? Right. Institutional and individual investors' needs won't change as a result of the coming shift in returns. So, something needs to be done within portfolios. The narrow advance of the stock market over the past several years, just like in the 1990s, has created bargain opportunities in some market segments. And just like Kmart's blue light specials, these are deeply discounted relative to the overall stock market. We think they offer opportunities for future returns that do not come along often. But it's always, they're not without risk. What are some of these opportunities? U.S. value stocks now trade, by some measures, at their deepest discount to growth stocks ever. Value stocks were already cheap compared with growth stocks prior to the COVID downturn earlier this year. However, that gap widened even further as the economy shut down which punished cyclical stocks and rewarded growth stocks in the technology sector. This valuation gap cannot be justified by differences in fundamentals, as the least profitable companies have been the best-performing stocks lately. Thus, value stocks now offer a rare chance to buy good assets at great prices. And in fact, as we pointed out in a previous vidcast, Warren Buffett's best returns were captured during these periods, when value stocks were cheap. And today's environment is the cheapest ever. But are there others? Yes, the the other areas of the market that are super cheap are all overseas. Uh, International stocks have underperformed the U.S. market for a long time now. International economies have largely lagged growth in the U.S., so much of this underperformance has been justified. But there are segments that are super cheap currently, such as emerging market stocks, small cap international stocks, or for those with a larger risk tolerance, emerging market value stocks. These all trade at rock bottom price earnings ratios and below their book value. By way of comparison, the S&P is over two times more expensive on a P.E. basis and trades at more than three times its book value. Are there ETFs or mutual funds that track these market segments? There are. RPV and RZV invest in deep value stocks in the U.S. AVDV is an international small cap value fund. And Dimensional Fund Advisors has a mutual fund that covers emerging market value stocks. These are all well-diversified, cost-effective funds to get exposure to these asset classes that we've discussed. So how much should investors commit to these strategies? As I mentioned, despite their low valuations, these investments are not without their risks. So a tilt towards these asset classes rather than a wholesale move into them probably makes more sense for most investors. Each investor has to determine their own risk tolerance, but these investments would certainly be at the high end of the risk spectrum. All these funds may be risky. It also sounds risky to pile into overvalued growth stocks today, even though that might be a well-accepted approach based on recent historical returns. So for those with a higher risk tolerance and an appetite to deviate from the norm in search of higher returns, the blue light specials may have some appeal. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Arm Brewster Capital Management's Invest Ed Vidcast series. As always, please reach out if you'd like to discuss this or any financial topic in more detail.